Yeah, I'm doing a shameless free plug for our friends over at Deal Machine. Yeah, awesome um, stuff. I like their hats. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But and they, they do have, good uh, business. They have a great, great program uh, to help you find properties that are available. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so a couple of things. The supply of affordable homes jumped 13% year over year. Um, and this is as of the third quarter. This was prompted by the end of the forbearance programs, which probably means most of these folks that were in forbearance now have their home up for sale because they, yeah. can't, they can't make it up. Um, and that's the difference between this go round and 2008 values on these homes keep going up. So right. they're, uh, they're not necessarily underwater. They just can't catch up. And uh, unless they can find a modification, which will uh, take those payments and just add them to the end, they, all yeah. their payments are due at once. Right, Jonathan? What, yeah. What, uh, you know, what's to now everyone looks at it differently, but what's to motivate the holder of that loan to do a modification when they, when you know the value is there on the, on the property. So basically, you know, what's to motivate the lender to say, I'll modify your loan, help you out here, get this back on track for you. As opposed to say, sell the house and we, you know, you walk away with some money and we get all of our money. Right. You know, and then those folks are going to become renters because exactly. they've got a forbearance on their mortgage now and qualifying for a new mortgage might be a little bit tougher because they have that kind of a blemish. Yeah. On their mortgage. I mean, yeah, they've, they've you know, they've missed payments and all mm -hmm. this stuff. I mean, yeah, it'll eventually hit their credit and, you know, it'll be on there. So then you have all, yeah, you have a larger pool of, of people. 13 wanting to, more percent of people looking for houses to rent. I almost said people <laughs> wanting to rent and I apologize. People forced, forced to rent. To yeah. rent. Yeah. 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 Well, the good news is they're building plenty of apartment complexes. They sure are. They sure are. Um, so what was that you said? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Bill, because Jonathan was just quoting us some information yesterday that he heard about, you know, everybody's thinking that we've got a few years left, but we're well, thinking that we're, you know, undersupplied, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's current inventory or inventory in progress. Um, and uh, I wish I could remember the, the lady's name. I can't. Um, she's basically saying that's not true. The inventory that we have available plus the inventory that is in current production is actually in excess of the absorption ability that we currently have. So, or, or will have. I don't believe that because we've gotten uh, over a million new people into the country just in this past eight months. <laughs> Yeah, Again. That's, that's a true statement. <laughs> that's hard. Um, that's hard to fight, right there. Yeah, I mean that's not a that's not a false. I don't think that's a false statement. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean there are more people. It's the it's the people who are able to. Uh, it's twofold. It's you know, to fill in those those rentals. Um, you know, because I guess you know if we're overbuilding what she's saying, perhaps overbuilding on a class multifamily. There's going to be, be there of those, of those million people that are added. How many of those are going to go into a class top of the rents facilities? Right. right. Probably. I mean, probably not, not most of them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so we could have, and we could be overbuilding oversaturated on that front. Um, the, the, the one that I wanted to read in more detail is, you know, she's also saying on the single family side as well, which is a harder pill for me to swallow. Cause I'm like, man, is that true? W now, would I say that it's oversaturated potentially for first time home buyers? No. Is it oversaturated for, um, people who are looking for like their second, third or fourth home. I can maybe agree with that a little bit more, but on the, on the first time home buyer or the people downsizing, that's, that's hard to, yeah. Hard to understand. <clears throat> yeah. And that's the market that's growing the most according to uh, data that Barry Habib, I don't know if you mm -hmm. follow him um, that he's put out, he's showing that 
uh, you know, the average age of people buying a house is 33. 33 years ago, we had one of the highest birth rates. The millennials. And, yeah, yeah. And it continues to grow over the next three to four years. Well, most millennials are, you know, right around that age, uh, probably between, I think at this point, you know, 29, 28 and up. Um, they're getting into that, you know, where they want that house, that fit, per perhaps that family. Mm -hmm. um, if not, you know, at least a dog or two where they can run around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's, uh, I mean, that there's good points on both sides that they're making and, and um, you know, who really knows? Well, the, <laughs> only, the only God. Yeah. The only thing that, <laughs> that, I, and I apologize, I can't remember this woman's name. She accurately called the top of the market in 2005. And that's what she's famous for, or, you know, what made her famous. Um, so, you know, when someone accurately calls something like that, and then they say, Hey, here's the reasons why we're, we're over, we're over um, in overproduction of single family and multifamily. Then, you know, it perks up your ears. You want to yeah. listen. Yeah. She's like a no Nostradamus. I know. <laughs> We'll see. Yeah. There's there's a lot of people making a lot of speculation, and and it's just it's such an odd situation that we're in to begin with. It's hey, if you, it's hard to see what's really going to happen. You go outside every day and say it's going to rain. One day you're going to be right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. And then there's uh, you know, we're we're talking about oversaturation of that market, and um, you know, one, other things that have popped up and grown like crazy is, you know, the Airbnb market mm -hmm. um, just in. Oh, we'll we'll talk about that in just a minute. Let, OK, let, let's finish up with some of this breaking news here. And then okay. we'll, we'll jump into it's a couple breaking. of state topics. Um, 30 year fix this week. Three point three, four percent was the average. Woo, jumped. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, but that's an average. So uh, mm. that's not what the Fannie Freddie is. Um, but it is a little bit higher, mm -hmm. uh, which it needs to be. I mean, inflation hit a 30 year high of 8%, 8%. Wages went up, but they only went up by 6%. So wages are still going backwards. And no one's working. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the, Accessory dwelling units. Everybody knows what those are, right? The ADUs, the uh, mother-in-law fleets. Yeah, and the like. she sheds. Yeah. Um, they can increase the value of your property by up to 35% that a study was showing recently. But here's kind of the drag on that. It's costing you an average of 260 dollars a square foot to build one of those Woo. so if you don't already have a detached garage with a you know an extra story on it that you can just redo um, <laughs> <laughs> it costs quite a bit of money and i don't know that you're going to get your total investment out of it if you're using it for cash flow rental. then you can probably get your money's worth out of it um, but if you're using it for, like I said, a, a mother-in-law suite, um, that 35% to the value is not going to really make any difference. Sure. Well, most people don't have that money just sitting there to build it. They have to cash, you know, you know, refinance and cash out some of the equity in their home to do that. Right. Yeah. But my point is you could probably take that money and, uh, you know, the average is around $180,000. How much can you invest that? Uh, take that money and invest it in yeah. an actual rental property and get a better return than putting the, the dwelling in your own property. Well, yeah. I, I disagree with the cost uh, to build that 260 square foot. It's ridiculous. That's the that might be average. in uh, California, maybe. But well, yeah, you're averaging all that. Yeah. Average. And most of these units are in your bigger cities. Um, yeah. Uh, because they need the, there's a, a lack of space. And they mm -hmm. want affordable housing, so to speak, inside of the major cities. Yeah. But well, even in Charlotte, they're encouraging you to um, add that additional dwelling unit. They're encouraging that uh, within the city of Charlotte, changing the 
um, the zoning laws so that uh, really, so everybody's basically a, um, a multifamily lot so that you can add that dwelling on there now. They're really encouraging that. Hmm. So if they're doing that in Charlotte, I'm sure they're doing that elsewhere. 